Morning everyone, welcome back to the channel Handing the Shame Back. This is dedicated to survivors of child sexual abuse here in New Zealand and out across the world. The channel is dedicated solely to you guys because it's such a silent endemic out there and we really need to try and get the word out and have you feel as supported as possible. There's always a trigger warning on this show simply because the content is around child sexual abuse. So if you are feeling that way, stop looking and go to the bottom where you'll see show notes which have areas for help and resource to support you. Right in the meantime, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce Mary Knight to you. Um, now, Mary Knight is a survivor of various forms of familial human trafficking. Uh, she's a film, been a full-time filmmaker since 2010. She's an author and she's a public speaker. So welcome to the show, Mary. So great to have you here. Thank you. So very um, interested if you're comfortable to share with us all What's kind of led you to this? What, what's your history, I guess, uh, an overview of, of what you have kind of experienced and led to this place? My abuse started from my earliest memory. Yeah. And I was abused by relatives and I was trafficked. Um, I was sold. Um, and... I experienced extreme abuse, um, as I know you did as well. So are we talking um, mainly uh, father figure, uncles? I was molested by women as well as by men. I was molested by my mother and um, I was, um, I was sold to women and to men. Um, I have more memories with men, but yeah, women were among my abusers. Wow. Um, I was um, child pornography. I was used in child pornography. My father, which my father um, had professional camera equipment, um, even though we didn't live in that nice of a house he had, and he, he was a good, cinematographer he took he had eight millimeter camera my mother sometimes took the footage um, when I was being raped so um, I was um, some of my abuse would be could be considered satanic ritual abuse because um, it used symbols from uh, it used symbols like crosses and um, baptism, communion, other things that are um, sacred to Christians were uh, desecrated in, yeah. in some of the abuse. Um, I was abused. My parents lived a complete double life. My father had top security clearance. Um, he was aerospace engineer, but um, my parents um, committed crimes, hate crimes, and were uh, members of the KKK. Um, not, not, you know, this was their double life. So they used their other life to hide. Wow. And they hid some of the things through church. They were very involved in church. So they used church to hide the KKK involvement. And then they used um, KKK actually to hide the, child pornography. I mean, it was not everyone in the KKK is or was um, a pedophile, but no. I, it's more represented in that group because I think people who will um, dehumanize another person because of skin color may also, will is more likely to dehumanize a child. It's, yeah, and it's my heart sinks as I'm listening to you and I look at this beautiful woman uh, sitting in front of me now and I'm thinking, wow, um, it, it feels like you've been to hell and back. 
Um, I'm talking about the spirit that's coming through in terms of beauty. I don't, I don't look at external. But hey, if you've got it, you've got it. <laughs> um, so I guess one of the, the core comments you made, which I'd, I'd love to explore further with you, is you, know, you talked about um, mother abuse. And I don't know about over in the States, um, but I know here in New Zealand there's a real tendency to not want to accept or believe or or support that that actually does exist and it did um, and we have a lot of female and male survivors who are struggling to be heard or believed around this and I guess I just wondered two things really one how did that impact you as opposed to your dad's sexual abuse your mother sexually abusing you? Well, I'm more, I, I still tend to be more embarrassed about it. I'm, although I'm doing my film, Mother's Molestation, a film about child abuse, and I'm speaking, uh, speaking very um, directly about it, but it was, um, I thought about not disclosing that, um, but as far as the abuse itself, it really is hard to divide out how one abuse affected me and how another one. I was talking to a cousin and about whether incest is harder or ritual abuse. And it's like when you're working on the ritual abuse memories, those seem the worst and they are tend to at least mine tended to be more torture, it included torture more than the incest did. But there's something about the incest that it's that personal relationship that makes it hard. I think being a woman and I remember just body acceptance. I remember for a while as I was, cause I didn't remember until I was 37. So I had, as I was remembering those things, just looking at my own breast and, you know, realizing, I mean, it just, just that similarity. I mean, just as, is common to, you know, look like your uh, biological parent it, it just was really hard for me yes. having, you know, experienced these uh, things with her. I've, I've really, I've um, tried to understand more what it was because there, uh, some of it, some of the sexual assaults by my mother, I believe were, um, captured on film uh, for um, child pornography. And so for a while I was like, well, maybe she really wasn't a pedophile. Maybe she was always doing that to make child pornography. And it just was like, I don't care. I mean, she did it and it, I can't know what goes on in a pedophile's mind because it's, it's just beyond me to think about that, especially someone who would, well, yeah, it's just, so now I don't think about that. I mean, I, I don't think of why she did it, but I did, I did go through trying to figure out why she did it and it just didn't get me anywhere. No, and I guess it, it's not why. We'll, we'll never understand the why. I guess I was just interested when you think of a mother and a mother's love um, it's just at such odds with what we believe or, or, or know or um, have been told mothers are. And I guess it's that, that whole trust thing um, which kind of emerged for me as you talked about, you know, uh, mother abuse or maternal abuse as well. Um, so it sounds like it, it's really hard to differentiate, I guess, for our audience out there we get this, this female abuse come up 
a lot and it's always shut down and I, I guess I just wondered if there was any more around the trust issue Mary, yeah. as opposed to what went on the actual trust whether that had been impacted more significantly because this was your mother I, I you know yeah well I think I I, I I did I didn't realize until I remember my abuse that I how much closer I felt to my mother than to my father I just hadn't because as an adult she was so critical I don't know that I felt that way but as a child it was just really hard for me to let go of my mother and yeah. I knew I needed to I knew I needed to dis distance myself from both parents um and um I but yeah, I remember times like realizing that she was there at this one ritual was just, when I realized she was there, it was just so traumatic to oh, think of her being present. And just yesterday, actually, I had a, a, a deep massage and I realized another thing I had known that a child who I, I believe I had a sibling who was murdered. There's no birth record or anything. This was all we lived way out in the country. And, um, but what I remembered yesterday was that my mother was a killer or one of the killers. Yeah. And I hadn't realized that before. And so then I started thinking of myself like, here I'm, you know, breastfeeding for my mother and knowing that she's capable of murder. I mean, I think something that's going on for me now is recognizing that just the act of relaxing fully is triggering. Yeah. And so that's my thing I'm working on now. And I, I've done lots of work on myself, but this, you know, it was, uh, whether a child actually was killed or not, I uh, I believed it to be, and I had thought it, it was one child that happened once, but I can't place the age, and so I actually think it happened more than once that this yeah. was something that they did to terrorize me from a very young age and then continued. We moved to a different house when I was six. I don't, it was before then, but I think it was, it, uh, it was before my younger brother was born. And then after my younger brother was born, it happened. And he's three and a half years younger. So. It, so it's de definitely been been more than than once and I guess for our audience out there I'm wondering if, if we can just take it back a wee bit um, when you're talking about mother's involvement and mother abuse what advice or what uh, tips would you give our audience out there who have also suffered from mother abuse is there anything you would say that's helped you um, come to terms with it? Is there any techniques you would give? You know, you talked about massage. Um, anything that's helped you to move further and move on from this? Well, that one thing that brings to mind is when I, I was at a writing conference, I met with someone else who... Um, was molested by her mother and um, she didn't have the kind of background I had that I've gone into that was torture and that type of thing. Yeah. This was all that had happened to her was molestation by her mother who yeah. probably was mentally ill or who actually, yeah, like they lived with another relative because her mother had problems. But one thing we talked about was that people so much don't like to believe it, that there's a, the movie Precious. Yes. It's about mother, there's mother incest in it, mother, uh, daughter incest in it. But people watch that whole thing and they don't get that part. And, and uh, 
I was reading the book and it was in there and I thought, well, that can't be in the movie too. It's very clearly in there, but people can read that and not recognize it. So because they don't want to recognize it. And so there are things written, there are things about mother-child incest that, that just, uh, and, and another time I knew about it was I, when I was, I'm 66 now, but when I was uh, in college, so this is a long time ago, uh, in the 70s, and I was getting a degree in psychology and I got an internship where I got um, field placement where I, it was mostly observational, but it was at a psychiatric hospital for veterans. So it was, well, it was virtually all men um, who were um, there. And these were like, they, it was, they had been there for many, many years. But they let me read some files. And the, um, it was among that population, it wasn't uncommon that they were molested by their mother. Mm. And so this is not a new thing. I mean, no. this is not at all. And um, my so, aunt, so I'm just going to stop you because uh, I know we, we haven't got a lot of time today. I'm just wondering, is there any tips you would give our audience who's, who have suffered from female sexual abuse, that, that kind of anything that helped you to move on or gain some acceptance Nothing that's different than the other recovery work I do. N nothing I, different to all the All the things I do for recovery journaling, yoga, uh, meditation, um, um, I, physical therapy, massage. I mean, just all healthy eating, just all the things I do for my recovery are the same things I would do. There's not a difference that, and why I mentioned those things is a difference is it feels so unique. It feels like you're so alone. Yes. And so if you can see that you're not, it, people don't talk about it much, but you're not alone. And so that's, that's what I would say would be unique, but otherwise, um, no, I don't. Um, I, I have come to think of myself as my own mother and that's been helpful. Um, but it's been a long road with mother abuse because yes. she also was nurturing. And that's, I, that's the paradox, isn't it, Mary? The, the mother is seen as the nurturer. Um, so to then have the face of the abuser must just be so confusing for, for yourself and for our survivors out there and of course it's not just mothers who abuse it's also other females uh, that can be known to to our survivors out there do you so it, it's really exciting and I had the honor of um, of seeing your movie I think it had it well over a million views actually um, that you made um, I think it was last year or 2020. And I'd love to, to know, so obviously at the beginning we, we introduced you as, you know, you're our filmmaker, full-time filmmaker since 2010. Can you tell us a little bit about um, perhaps what you're working on now and when we're going to see it out there? Okay. And so the one that's already on YouTube, it's on real women real stories youtube site and it's just almost up it's at 99,000 um, views so almost up to 100,000 views wow. and it's called am i crazy my journey to determine if my memories are true so it's about the recovered memory controversy and my new film which will be coming out this fall mothers and molestation a film about child abuse is um it when I, I made that film because when I did my first film and I was, um, I was trying to determine if my memories are true and yes. I determined they are, you know, absolutely sure they're true. And, yes. <laughs> um, and 
I really got a lot of closure about my father and started recognizing God as my only father. But I knew there was more, I needed more work I needed to do regarding my mother. And so I, um, that's, that's, that was why I made the other film. And I now am at a good place about my mother, but it was my mother that, that, that was the work you know, that, that came last, I would say. Although, I mean, I worked on things at other times, but that came last. Um, well, and, it's you know, probably one of the, you know, when you think about it, Mary, it's one of the, the toughest, the toughest things to accept. I mean, you've, you've said already during this interview that people, you know, there's that movie Precious you referred to, People didn't even comment. They didn't. Even, they accepted it. it. You know, this kind of endemic around abuse, and, and I guess from what I'm hearing from you today, the bigger silence around the mother or the or the female abuse. Goodness me, how can our how can we help our fabulous survivors out there to to ever speak of it? And you know, I guess there's a question yeah. to consider. How can how can we help our survivors out there to to share this with someone when there's no way society even wants to consider it? Right. Yeah. And mm. one thing on interview, I'm still going. I I have uh, another interview, one more interview to complete for that film, and and then I'll be done. But it's a, a young woman. She's 30 years old and she was trafficked by her mother. She turned, she, she was able to be interviewed. She finally got someone to listen enough that, um, that she was interviewed by Child Protective Services. She was nine years old and um, they believed that the man did it. So they put the man in prison but they sent her home with her mother and her mother trafficked her again. They would not believe the mother would do this. And so this wasn't a long time ago. I mean, if you do the math, we're talking like, this was like um, uh, 20 years ago, 21 years ago that this happened. Um, so that's one reason I, it's real important to me doing the film, getting the film out um, so that people can recognize. And I feel like when adult survivors speak out, children become more safe because they will be more likely believed. Yeah. And yes, I think you're right. And as you've been talking, you know, I've been thinking it's education too, isn't it? We've got to actually start educating people uh, around it's okay to talk what goes on is never okay but we have to start normalizing these conversations and um, survivors out there don't hold back even if it's just to a your best friend or to a family member try and tell yes. someone every time you do you're handing that shame back so please do it Yes. Mary, yeah, Mary, moving on, I'd love to hear about your book because you're an author. Tell us about the book you've written. Oh, yes, uh huh. And that should be coming out in the fall, also, um, or at least, well, maybe six months from now or so. Um, and the title is Becoming Mrs. Brown. Oh. Um, it's a memoir and essays, memoir and essays by uh, child sex trafficking survivor by me. Um, and so the essays, I have trigger warnings on each essay. So if you're not wanting to hear or read about something super triggering, you can read one of the others or maybe, you know, decide when is a good time to read the more triggering ones. Um, and it's got, um, it's got a heartwarming story. At one point, this is related. Don't to my give mom. it away. Don't tell us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> we might we might be buying your book. <laughs> oh no, but I can just tell it's a I, I wrote a short fictional short story, but it's about um my angel connection with my mother because I did feel an angel connection with her seven years after her her death. I, I don't feel that now, but um it's um it's a redemptive story. It's um about heaven you um everyone goes to heaven but you're whatever age you are spiritually mature so my mother wasn't mature so she became a seven-year-old angel so it's it's a cute it's a cute story uh another one in there is psychological benefits of delayed recall people don't think about the good things about not remembering your abuse but my life is much better as an adult because i um I didn't always remember it. And I, the thing that I, ha I want to say real briefly about my life now, is usually I start with telling about my life now, but I have such a good life. I have a wonderful marriage. I got married in 2010. I'm wearing my cat dress because I just got back from doing volunteer work at my grandson's school. And one of my grandsons loves cats. And um, the other kids complimented me on my cat dress too. <laughs> So I just, I, I really, I have a life that, that is great now. So I, I, I really want to emphasize that because, you know, when you're in the real hard part of recovery, you think you're never going to get out, but you do. And, mm. you know, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And um, I, I really, yeah, I just, I love my life as it is now. And one thing I did as far as you're talking about tips for survivors, but I think of my recovery work as work and like that's my part-time job. And so then if I have a day when a lot of the day has been spent um, meditating or napping or whatever that helps me or in psychotherapy, um, then I think of that as work. That's my part-time job. And it's going to pay off, not right away, but it has definitely paid off for me with a lot of happiness in my life. I'm so, so delighted to hear that. And, um, you know, just listening to what you do and what you have done and where you are, um, you know, the audience is going to be able to pick up some really good things to try. And that's, that's so wonderful. You, you also had talked about or mentioned that you do public speaking. So for people, because this is now, ta-da, handing the shame back is now in 20 countries over the world. Um, so for people in your part of the world, um, if you're doing any public speaking, how can they find you, Mary? How can they link into oh, you? Yeah. And, uh -huh. and On my website, you? or I also um, I hope you'll put my email address, Mary Knight Happy at yahoo.com, mm -hmm. so they can contact me and uh, for public speaking. And also, I am available for virtual um, speaking, so um, that could apply to any country and for virtual showings of my film with Q and A. So um, I, my film, the, um, also if someone want, um, I do have my film, the one that's already out, it's available with Spanish subtitles, Polish subtitles and German subtitles. So if, in addition to closed caption English. So if someone wants one of those, they can contact me. So what is your website, Mary? MaryKnightProductions.com. My last name is with a K, K-N-I-G-H-T, MaryKnightProductions.com. So can I ask you, because I think the audience would be interested to know this as well. You know, my goodness me, look at you emerge as an emerging, healed person. You know, well, kudos to you. What led you, my question was, what led you into becoming a filmmaker? Had it always been a passion or? Well, I, it's, it's my art. I'm so happy to get to have that as my art. But I took a creative creativity class when I was 40. And um, I didn't plan to necessarily do anything with it. But um, it, I ended up, 
I decided to write short stories and I decided like novel. Well, yeah, I was going to write short stories. And then uh, someone in my class wanted to use my story and he and I would write a, a screenplay for a film. So that's how I got into screenplay writing. And then um, it's hard to get your film made unless you make it yourself. Um, but also I was a social worker for um, over 20 years. And I think my films are a way of doing social work now. And I'm actually thinking about getting back, uh, working as a clinical social worker again, specifically with children. So um, I, it's, it's another way to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also my art. Mm -hmm. And um, I never thought I was artistic. I never thought I was talented. Well, um, <laughs> hello, mirror, Mary, mirror, um, you know, but look, uh, it's fantastic and, and there is hope out there. And I just want to say to our audience, guys, listen, Mary's been able to turn the corner. She's been able to do this work. It's taken decades as, as we would expect. Please the very worst thing you can do is to compare yourself to someone who has emerged through. She's got nothing but love in her heart for you and uh, wants to help and support in any way possible. So if you're at the stage in your recovery where you've told one person, you know what, that's the most powerful thing you can ever do. Um, so um, amazing Mary to have you on the show and is there any last minute um, comments you would uh, make or any last tips you might give to our fellow survivors watching out there um, I, I have a how I heals list on my website it's one of the pages on my website and also I have a how I healed essay that's much longer and if you contact me i will send you that essay free awesome thank you so much so mary stay on the line and um audience out there how fabulous to see you guys again um i've been missing this um so as we close out please feel free to like subscribe and share this why because we want to get this out there so as many survivors as possible can be helped um, second anything to do with mary will be documented in the show notes below all her links i promise you and thirdly if you feel um, you are able or healed enough that you would like to be considered for this show please go to gloriamasters.com and fill out the form there in the meantime kia kaha look after your lovely selves and we'll see you next week <laughs>